So let's carry on with our conversation about rose curves. We're graphing on the polar plane, and the first example of graphing a rose curve starts with this equation, r equals 2 sine 2 theta. And we're going to see the 2 sine 2 theta isn't actually the best initial example, but it's what we're going to start with, and then we'll sort of contrast back to it in a moment. But because of the way that these notes are set up, it gives us the opportunity to plot some points. So I rewrote the original equation down here because it's off the top of the screen. And then I took these R values that you're seeing in the bottom row and I plugged them, <clears throat> or sorry, I calculated them one at a time by taking these theta values that are in the top row, plugging them into the right side of the equation and then uh, calculating the corresponding R values. I've written down the decimal approximations of those R values for you so that we don't have to sit here together going through and punching them into the calculator. If you want to do that for practice and make sure that you're capable of using whatever calculator you're using to calculate those values, that's not a bad idea. At least do one or two of them. Uh, and then once you've got the table filled in, we can start plotting some points. So let's do that. <clears throat> uh, our first point is 0, 0. So we're aiming in the direction of zero, moving zero units, which causes us to plot a point at the pole. Then aiming in the direction of pi over six, we're going out about one and three quarters. At pi over four, we're going out two. At pi over three, same amount, about uh, one and three quarters. Then back to the origin, <clears throat> when theta is equal to pi over two. And then toward two pi over three, this is a little bit interesting. Toward 2 pi over 3, we need to move backwards the 1 and 3 quarters, the 1.73. So aiming at 2 pi over 3, coming back. So I'm into the fourth quadrant, pretty far down there, really toward 5 pi over 3. Aiming at 3 pi over 4, walking backwards, 2 units. Aiming at 5 pi over 6, walking it back to here. And then off the end of the, <clears throat> excuse me, the table, I did plot 6 pi over, what would that be? Yeah, it, it would be 6 pi over 6. Um, so I plotted pi because that does rotate us back to the origin. The sine of, if you take pi, plug it in, 2 times pi makes 2 pi. The sine of 2 pi is the same as the sine of 0, which is equal to 0, times the coefficient of 2 still leaves us with a 0. So if you'd like to put pi at the end here and box that in, you may. <clears throat> Now, this looks incomplete to me. And the reason it ends up being incomplete is because we didn't follow the initial instruction of using symmetry. What I'd like you to do is to go through and attempt the symmetry tests again and see what you get as results, because that is a necessary part of the process. And I'll tell you one thing for certain, is that when you do the test for theta equals pi over two symmetry, where you have to change the r and the theta value to negative r and negative theta, that one should test true because we want to be able to fold these two petals of our rose curve over the vertical axis, which on the polar plane is the theta equals pi over two axis or line. We want to be able to fold that over in order to get the graph that you're seeing in the top right corner of your screen I had already gone into Desmos and graphed this for us so that you can see exactly what our rose curve is supposed to look like. Now, what I didn't do was investigate, and I'm sure it's possible, uh, to see if it's possible to graph this in Desmos on a polar plane. <clears throat> I just graphed it on the Cartesian coordinate plane, and as a result, you're not seeing the circles, but <clears throat> really this graph should be inscribed in a circle that has a radius of two. So if you went from the origin and moved two units up and to the right, sort of into the middle of the first quadrant there, that would be a distance of two, all right? The distance all the way to two comma two on the coordinate, Cartesian coordinate plane, remember, is a distance of two root two, which would be longer than our petal. So these petals do indeed have a length of two. And how many petals are there there are four, and the reason I'm asking those questions, which seem kind of silly, 
is because I want to point this out to you that this 2, which is the coefficient on our trig function, represents the length of the pedal. The, the coefficient on your angle measure, theta, as we see it here, if that's an even number, then there will be twice that many pedals. As a result, we're seeing four pedals. If that number had been a three, if it was two sine three theta, then we would be seeing three pedals because if that coefficient is odd, then there will be that many pedals. And we're gonna have an opportunity to write that in uh, into the printed notes a little bit later. Let's see some additional examples. So the next one is two times sine five theta I'm seeing the five in front of my theta, which means I'm only going to have five petals, not 10, because five is an odd number. And I've got, that graph is prepped for us over here to the right, except sometimes when the screen is set up a certain way, I can't do exactly what I want to do over there. All right, that should work. Let's see if I can make that small again. Yeah, and <clears throat> interfaces not doing exactly what I want it to do. See how the two sine two theta stays at the bottom there? It ends up sort of relocating it, relocating it in my list. I don't know why that happens. Uh, anyway, I want to turn that one off and I'd really like it to be up here. And then I want to turn on this one for you. It looks a little bit like a starfish uh, or a star anyway. It is, we're calling it a rose generically. It's got the five petals because of that five theta and the length of each petal is two. Going up the vertical axis here, you can see clearly that the petal length is two. I'm not drawing these by hand. <clears throat> this one I probably could have drawn fairly well, but I do want you to be drawing this into your printable notes. And then I wanna look at the next graph, which is five sine three theta. I have to zoom out on this one because petal length is five, but there are only three petals odd number on theta means we'll have that many petals. So make sure you're copying that into your notes. Our next graph, sine four theta. The four in front of theta means that we're gonna have twice that many petals. So you're seeing the eight petals, but the invisible leading coefficient there in front of theta, or sorry, in front of the sine function is a one. So the length of each of these petals is one. And finally, <clears throat> We have three sine six theta. I don't, I can't remember vividly the actual first time I tried to draw this graph, but I remember it looked the same for the handful of future times that I drew this graph. And whenever I draw this thing by hand, it doesn't come out, come out looking like a pretty flower. It looks like a sausage explosion or something. I end up with these kind of fat looking loops that are coming out of the origin. It's embarrassing, <clears throat> not doing it anymore. I'm just going to let the technology graph it for me so that you know what it's supposed to look like. And, and that's our last rose curve that, you're, that we're going to draw, that you're going to draw into your notes. And before we go on to the summary page, let's just do a little matching game here at the bottom of the screen. Let's look at the first equation, 3 cosine 2 theta. Remember that the 3 tells us the length of our petals and the two in front of the theta, since it's even, means we're gonna have four petals. That makes it pretty clear that it matches with this graph. In fact, because of our graph options, we could just look at the coefficients on theta. That says three theta, which means there will only be three petals because it's an odd coefficient. Seven theta gives us seven petals, so let's make sure one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So that is our next graph. <clears throat> and finally, the four theta means eight petals, which matches up with our third graph. All right, so you've got a lot of examples. You should, becoming, should be becoming very familiar with the pattern in terms of the structure of the function and the resulting graph. Orienting the graphs can be a little bit tricky. Let's actually talk about that for just a second. Let's look at actually the second equation, r equals two cosine three theta. I know that there are gonna be three, pe uh, sorry, three petals, and the petal length is gonna be two, 
but you'll notice that this graph is oriented this way with a pedal aiming to the right. How did, how do I, how could I have anticipated that? Why wouldn't it be that I'd have a pedal coming up the origin, or sorry, up the vertical axis, and then maybe my other two pedals would be, <clears throat> maybe one would be out here, and the other one would be out here. How did I see the sausages, right? I mean, it's terrible. Um, you see how there would, why there would be a question as to where I should even draw the first pedal. Once you draw the first one in the correct location, then you can evenly distribute them around and if I erase my stupid drawing, then you can see how evenly distributed those are. Uh, there is some symmetry to it. It's this one's symmetric over the horizontal axis. But how could I have anticipated that? Maybe you could look at enough graphs and figure out what the pattern is. However, my recommendation is that you pick a theta value. In this case, I'm gonna start off with, why not, a theta value of zero and it's going to be a very nice coincidence that that's going to be very helpful. Uh, with a theta value of zero, that gives me the cosine of three times zero, which is zero, and two times the cosine of zero. What's the cosine of zero? Oh, that's equal to one. So that's two times one. Well, that means that we've got ourselves an R value of one, or so, sorry, of two. There we go. So aiming in the direction of zero, I need to move two units. So I would come to my graph and I would start at the origin or at the pole and I'd move out and I'd plot my point at two units out and I'd realize, hey, the radius or the length rather of these pedals is supposed to be two. Well, that has to be top dead center on one of the pedals. It's the only other way that I'm gonna be two units away from the pole. So by a happy coincidence, we, we chose a theta value which put us right at the tip of one of the poles or of one of the pedals, sorry. And that can get you started in terms of trying to orient the graph if you're drawing the graph freehand, or if you're choosing it from a lineup of three pedaled graphs, and the only difference between two of the graph options is the orientation. Pedal length is the same, number of pedals is the same, just the orientation. You might have to plug in a theta value. So good to know that that's an option. Uh, I'm going to jump down to the summary page real quick so we can fill that in and that'll wrap up this segment. All right, here is the rose curves section on the summary page. And what we've determined is that the coefficient A, it's not the coefficient A determines, but it's the coefficient A, this A right here, this A right here, determines what? It determines the pedal length. Ugh, what have I done? We also learned that the n value, that's the coefficient on theta, if n is odd, then the rows will have n petals, and if n is even, then the rows will have two n, or twice that many petals. And that is the extent of the sort of little notes that we get to write in on our summary page. Um, I think the other important aspect, which may or may not come in handy every time, is the idea that you can determine the orientation of the rows curve by plugging in I would bet usually more than one theta value. Okay, we got lucky plugging in a zero. Uh, maybe you can determine the pattern there. Maybe if you plug in zero and you don't get immediately the pedal length, maybe the next value you should try is pi over two. So maybe, there are, maybe there's a sort of a priority in which um, you can try theta values to get your rows curve oriented. Uh, I'm just gonna call it right here and invite you to click on the link right below me in order to follow me on to a conversation about lemniscates. See you there.